Dan Dickow, Scorebook Live, Washington. Uh, been asked a lot in the last week or so since uh, the sad and unfortunate news um, about the Kobe Bryant crash and, and death um, in the helicopter crash. So um, people have been asking, hey, did you play against him? Do you have any stories? Were you tight with him? Were you close? And uh, so I just want to quickly share a couple things. Um, I wasn't close with Kobe, but everybody kind of in the basketball world and in particular the NBA um, close-knit community, knew Kobe, uh, talked to him a number of times, but by no stretch of the imagination were we, you know, buddies or anything. Did have uh, plenty of times and opportunities where I got to play against him. Um, came across him many times before games, after games, during games, uh, just talked really quick. And, you know, the, the, there's a couple things that stand out to me. Um, you know, in, in my experiences of, of playing against Kobe or, or talking with him. And um, the first thing, I guess, would really go along the lines of his um, unbelievably unbelievable will to prepare, um, which led to a will to win. His ability to look at how to prepare to, to win um, through the details were unbelievably um, important to him and I think it's a great message for young athletes uh, and a great example of this would have been um, my time in the NBA I always prided myself on having a great work ethic and many times I would take a cab to the gym to the arena uh, maybe even an hour or so before the first bus um, went and I remember I did that in LA one time and I, I think it was a 7:30 game the first bus was leaving the hotel at maybe 4.30, and I took a cab at like 3.30. So I got to the Staples Center about maybe 4.15, get to the locker room, get out on the floor. I walk out at 4.30 thinking I'm going to be the first one out there. Well, Kobe's on the other end, and he's finishing up a workout. So he had already been there for probably a good hour. And it wasn't the – the fact that he was there early, because I knew many times he was there early, but it was what he was working on. It was pivoting. It was quick stops. It was left-hand finishes. Um, somebody who was at the peak of their game completely focused in on the details and doing it um, in the hours that nobody would see him working on. It was just mind-boggling to me, because at the time, he was best player in the game. Uh, another opportunity or an, another example where his attention to detail really absolutely shined was my third year in the NBA, I really finally got an opportunity to play a lot of minutes. And I was with New Orleans, and we were playing the Lakers in, in L.A. And we ran an offense called the Princeton offense. It was really dedicated on a lot of timing, spacing, cuts. Um, and I remember specifically um, a couple – possessions in the game early you know you're focused in you're, you're running everything with precision once you get into the crux of the game maybe in the second quarter your timing goes away a little bit your spacing defense isn't as, as queued up maybe as they were the first possession or two where they might know or have a good idea of what you're going to run so I got caught um, kind of going through the motions on a pass Kobe jumps in the passing lane goes down gets a steal uh, I think scored a layup um, Dead ball possession, uh, a minute or two later, Kobe walks right up to me. He looks me dead in the face. He goes, come on now, Dan, you're much better than that. I knew exactly what you were going to do. I read your eyes. You got a ball fake. You, you got to shift me a little bit. You're better than that. And I just looked at him. I shook my head, and I said, you're right. You're right. Um, so those are kind of two examples of, of interactions with Kobe that I, I thought really shared his shared his preparation, his will to win, his details that he was so uh, known for. Uh, two examples, I think, on the basketball side where I personally was blown away by his skill um, would have been um, two times I was with the Portland Trailblazers. I had separate stints with them. My first time, uh, it would have been in 2004, and we were a in a close game down the stretch in Portland. And I'm, a, I'm standing on the baseline. The game's tied, uh, so I'm not in the game at this time, but I'm the game is tied, and um, Kobe has the ball, um, just kind of rocking it back and forth up top. Reuben Patterson is guarding him, and uh, Kobe hits a deep three, about 26, 27 feet uh, three-pointer, uh, basically with a second left to force overtime. And while I was standing on the baseline kind of watching this, obviously I'm a player, I'm a competitor, I'm in the moment wanting to get the win, but I'm also 
kind of looking at it as a fan, you know, because I'm not in the game and I'm like, this is an unbelievable moment. You've got one of the best players in the game. Game is on the line. Let's see what he does. Knocks down the three to force overtime. Game ends up going into double overtime. Very similar situation. Kobe ends up hitting another big three down the stretch. I believe this time might have been at the buzzer. I don't remember clearly, but I know he hit another big three at the end of double overtime uh, for the Lakers to beat us as the Blazers, um, and that was in 04. Another one would have been my second stint with the Blazers. Um, and that season was uh, an interesting one because the Blazers, we were a bit in transition um, with our roster and, and kind of you know who was going to be a major player. Brandon Royer was a rookie. LaMarcus Aldridge was a rookie. Um, we went down there uh, to L.A. Kobe dropped 65 on us. And I didn't play big minutes that game, probably seven or eight minutes. Um, but I did have a couple opportunities where I'm guarding Kobe on a wing. Um, and just his skill level that night shined through to me more than maybe some of the other games. Granted, he scored 65 points. But I remember timeouts. You know, guys looking at each other like, what else can we do? Looking to the coaching staff and Nate McMillan for, hey, <laughs> are we going to double him? Are we going to, you know, blitz pick and rolls? Are, are we going to be help side early? Um, what are we going to do? Uh, and then you just look back and you see 65 points. Uh, that was amazing. So I know lots of people have shared thoughts, stories over the last week or so. Um, and those are a couple of mine. So um, this is Dan Dickow for Scorebook Live Washington.